Hello everyone and welcome to this lesson on how to paint the spring or you could say Easter bunny. So here's what I'm using as my reference photo. I got that off of uh, Unsplash and um, so that's a royalty free website. I will um, be posting this um, first half for everybody to see on um YouTube and but then I'll post the second half um, for everyone who's um, already signed up on my Patreon channel. If you want to join my Patreon channel and become a member, there are going to be lots of lessons like this there. I paint birds, flowers, and animals and seasonal. So lots of Christmas paintings, stuff like that that you can work on. And so just an idea. So this is sort of a painting I'm, I do chickadees inside a wreath like this. So I decided I'm going to make a little wreath and put a bunny and like a little Easter egg. You don't have to put the Easter egg in, but I thought it'd be kind of cute. So I got my reference photo out in front of me. And um, also for my Patreons uh, fans, I will give you all the reference photos. So if you sign up, you get all the reference photos and the videos and you get to walk through step by step how to paint these great little animals. So here is my palette. I've got out um, the video kind of cuts off, but I put out some yellow ochre, cad yellow light and red. And then up here is cut off. It's just white and some ivory black. And I put out some cool gray. Um, I have quinacrinone red here because quinacrinone mixed with cobalt you'll get to see later in the video how to make really pretty kind of um, purples. So I've also got some reference photos that I'll be adding and I will show you those quickly. So I found these also and those these will be uploaded but this wisteria I thought was kind of would be pretty kind of wrapping around and if you wanted to add these white roses you could too. So those will be and here's another one with a butterfly. So that could look really pretty. But for this video, because that might take a lot of extra work, I'm going to give you the photos, especially this one, because you could put the butterfly over here. Um, I'm going to just work on the bunny because I know how much time it all takes. <laughs> and I want you to, to be able to, to do the video, to do the lesson and not be overwhelmed with too much. So I could do a separate video on the butterfly and the and the wisteria because I think it's really pretty. So I've got out in my little jar here, this is my terp. I just use the Gamsol odorless min mineral um, spirit. So yeah, that's what I've got there. And um, let's see what else. I think that's about it. Um, just make sure my microphone is on. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's on, so that's cool. And okay, so to start off, I'm gonna just sort of block in some of that, some base colors for the bunny rabbit. I wanna make work on this little, this little guy first, or girl. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to just make um, sort of a neutral gray color. So I'll get some of this uh, ultramarine blue and some of this transparent brown oxide. And this will make a nice gray kind of wash. I'll show you. And um, I kind of want to get it on there a little bit darker because I'm going to be putting those lighter, um, the fur on top, which is going to be a lot lighter. So I'll start off with this. So just kind of blocking in a little bit. And I sketched this out just just before because I feel like it's a lot of a lot of um, information and I 
and I didn't want to over overly take up it wasn't hard to draw so I just sort of you know roughed it in because I kind of do things a little bit like I'm not really a perfectionist when it comes to the drawing I probably should but it just sort of I feel like once I get the paint going I can make corrections better and I can see shapes better so I don't get too tied up on the the first round of drawing so the main thing I'm kind of looking for is the just the basic shape of the composition so I, f I felt like it was really working um, pretty well right away so so once you get that little wash of the ultramarine blue and I used a little dab of that transparent brown oxide so when you use those two colors those are transparent so you're not going to have any thick paint it's not opaque so it's you can see right through to the to the back so now what I'm going to do is lift off with my this is the uh, one of those smooth Viva paper towels now I'm just going to kind of lift off a bit of that turp and paint just a little bit so it's not I don't want the surface to be slippery. So there you go. Just a little dab there. And yeah, I'm just making sure my microphone's working. Okay, so I like the way that looks so far. And I'm just gonna now um I think I'll put like a little, I could put like a little blue Easter egg in there or you could do a pale, a pale pink one. I Maybe I'll leave it for now and decide after I get all the flowers in and everything what looks best so it doesn't kind of overkill. So I can block in some of those flowers. Now I'm working on, I'm working off of, you know, these types of images so I kind of have to use my imagination but I kind of will look for things like you know just the basic shape I don't really want it to be really complicated so I'm going to look at that I've got that also on my iPad and so in front of me so I'm just going to shift pictures for a second here to that one with the roses just so I can see the leaves and everything and I'll shift over to a, a little bit bigger paintbrush. So I'll switch to, this is a six flat. And um, I'll start off by mixing some of that purple I told you about. So get some cobalt blue and a little quinacrinone. And maybe a little more blue just to get it a little bit more purpley and that's pink and then I'm gonna I'm gonna block in kind of the way I did the bunny just with a thin layer um so I'll just kind of look at those overall like kind of like shapes but not exactly mine's gonna be more kind of imaginary is what I'm going for here get a little more chirp in there that way you could even imagine, you know, I love lavender. Um, so, you know, you could even imagine that it's some lavender. People are confused. Not everyone grows up with in a climate where there's wisteria plants and stuff like that. So you just got to go with something that, especially if you're selling your paintings, you kind of pick flowers. I feel like they kind of, get people their their memories engaged or something that they enjoy um like exact you know I get when I paint pansies or something those are really meaningful flowers to a lot of people because you know they're flowers like that their mom really liked or you know someone their grandma you know most of the time it's their mom but 
And so I'm just kind of dabbing in some of this purple. And I really, I really like the feeling. I don't want it to be, I want everything to be kind of just more there. I don't want it like the flowers to be more like dominating. I just want them to sort of kind of be in the background. So once you get a, some of that purple dabbed around, um, then you want to add some of the green. So I've got this, the sap green I'm using is really, really green. Like you can see how green it is. Some sap green, like Windsor Newton, I like better. I think this is the Blick Art brand and it's very mossy green. So I'm going to add a little tiny dab of that transparent red oxide just to dull it down so it's not so maybe even some of that brown oxide just so it, it's more of a a darker green less less um less bright so then i'm going to take my brush and just make some simple leaves so to do that you kind of want to take your brush like this and push down and then see how i'm twisting my brush so that the thin part is on the canvas so I'm going to push down and twirl my brush so that just the thin part is on there. So it makes a leaf shape. And maybe one more little guy coming off the edge. I'm just really trying to keep this sim the shape simple. So same here. I'm just going to lift off, kind of push down. I've got the sap with that mixture of a uh, little bit of turp and the red and brown oxide to dull it down. If your sap is fine and don't worry about adding any. If you like the green you're using, I'm saying just use it. But you can always, and if you don't have um, this trans iron oxide red, you can always use a little bit of, you know, burnt I think it's burnt sienna. And I did a video on YouTube on how to use that instead. Because some people have a lot of trouble finding it. In some of these you could do a little, little twig of that green coming through. And then I'll take my paper towel again and sort of dab it around just to sort of block in a bit more. Okay, so that is looking really cute. Hopefully I don't I don't mess up that little bunny's face because <laughs> I really like I really like this. So yeah, you can see on my Instagram, I've painted chickadees in the middle and and um, it, even though it doesn't really make the mo most sense if you're thinking like, when do you see a bunny rabbit in a wreath? It's just kind of something fun. And I thought for my students, they've, they've we've painted uh, a lot of different things. So you kind of have to, I try to add the odd video that's kind of different here and there. Also, you, once you start painting things like this, you really, you know, you never know. You, you start thinking of other things you could do, you know, other things you could paint in a different way. And you don't have to save the wreath just for Christmas. You can make wreaths all, like, I like different wreaths on my door throughout the year sunflowers or you know not just Christmas so I just added a bit of a darker purple in there and you can have some of those little flowers kind of little coming off here and there too like just so it's not perfectly and don't worry about the shape of everything yet because um, we're going to pick a background color and kind of so you can have a few going off the edge so that gives it that more wisteria feeling 
Okay, and now I'm going to go back to the bunny. So that's how I kind of work. I like to go back and forth. So now I'll bring up my bunny picture on my iPad here and see what I can do. Um, there he is. Okay. So maybe I will switch to work on the face. I'll switch to a little smaller brush again. See if I have a decent brush. Maybe this little number two, flat. And I like flats, as you know. Okay, so we got to kind of go back. And I lost whatever I had sketched there. I kind of lost it. So I'm not going to go use the pink right away to draw because inside there is pink. I'll start off with maybe this transparent, like, red oxide. Last thing I want to do is have pink mixing all around and it gets a little... Too much so I'm going to block in a bit of that wherever there's like kind of a pinky color the in the ear there there's sort of that glow coming through and then I'm just going to go back and draw where that little nose is hopefully I get it the way it was so kind of like a Y with a little goes down into his it's got like a little lip or something there kind of comes down I could mix some blue into that kind of make it like a darker gray color there because down here it's more of a dark gray color a little cobalt and a little bit of that Transparent iron oxide red. And just kind of reshape my drawing again because it got it got a little lost in the mix. And so I'm just kind of I'll block in a little darker here for where the eye is. And around the nose. Mix up a little more of that dark grayish blue color. Kind of comes in underneath there. So I'm just kind of looking at the the shapes I see on the bunny's face and then kind of adding them back in here. That little lip part. It'll all make sense again soon when I start adding the mid-tones and stuff, but I want to get in kind of the basic, the dark areas again, so that the lighter, the lighter fluff really shows up. So what these are is when I'm, here, let me get my computer. Um, I'm looking at these dark, if you squint down and look where there's these little frames around the face and underneath the lip there, I'm just sort of adding those in. So it seems a little 
strange right now, but then later it'll make sense. And I even want to get in a little bit of that now that I, you know, get a little bit of dark there because I'm going to be putting that light part on there, but I want it to show. So I'm going to just, I'll kind of wipe it off a bit so you can see where the lighter spot's going. And I'll go to this number four flat. And I'm going to mix up using some white. And you can see it here. You can add some white into that puddle of cobalt and that mix like transparent brown oxide and cobalt and or ultramarine blue white and so any uh, ultramarine and brown oxide and white will make this kind of gray and if you want to warm it up you can always add a little bit of this yellow ochre to it just a tiny dab though because it's very strong but you kind of get the idea there so I'm just gonna put in now some of this thicker paint and I can make some lines to kind of show the the, the fur a bit more. And I'm going to shape out the eye a bit more using the edge of my brush. Kind of has a little white or a lighter color around the eye. And I'm just trying to really pay attention to kind of the overall shapes or I see and angles. So we got this going. And we'll add more detail later. Get some more white here so I can have more, more grays. I want to get that light white um, fur in there. Kind of wrap it around the nose. Like that. And he's got this really cute eye that has this like really light kind of shape around it. You can all, I'm going to adjust it all later, but I'm trying to get these different colors in there. And then there's some... This is the area for that what um, I'm going to put in like a light, little Easter egg in there. I haven't decided what color yet. I'm just kind of working this in. getting that kind of the main idea in there and then I'm going to go back and kind of adjust it all. So now this little ear you kind of want to go and kind of just dab that paint over it like that. Try to zoom in so you can see a bit what I'm doing better.
you just sort of build up, you know, the the values and the color. And then we can start to work on the details. I just want to kind of get that main idea in there. Okay, so now you kind of see it starting to take a little shape. Um, but we still got a ways to go. So I might just do a blue. Kind of a light blue. So I'll take cobalt. And if I have some turquoise, actually, that would be really kind of cute. Let me just see if I have turquoise here. So I have a color that's kind of fun. It's called Vivid Turquoise from Utrecht Paints, and that might be a good one. Just put that up there. Just so if I do a blue background, it will be a little different than the egg. So if I use like a cobalt blue, then this is kind of different. So I'm just blocking that in like so. And then I'll get some white paint with a little dab of the turquoise in it just so it's not as dark and put a little bit on top to give it that dimension so it looks a little bit more three-dimensional there. You could put a little more And you can always darken a little bit of that with some cobalt and just sort of add a little bit of a darker edge to it so that'll kind of make it look a little more rounded. Um, actually make it a little more tiny bit more pointy there all right and you can mix up some more of that gray using the brown oxide and the ultramarine blue and a little white and you get a that darker gray in there and I'm going to tuck in some of the a darker kind of gray behind there even if my reference photo doesn't have that just because I want I really want it to show up a little more. This is definitely a painting that you kind of have to stretch your imagination. Now the egg shows up a lot more too. I'm kind of sizing it a little down a little because it, it looked a, after I saw it on there I was like that's a little bit much for the bunny so I sized it a little too as I cut in to the 
cut that gray into the bunny. So I'm going to go around and add some of that shadow color just to can even take it down a notch more. I'm going to add it, that yellow ochre in there. So it's got some more shape. I want to get that shadow under the chin because that'll help to show off its little face. And kind of use that same mix. You can go in and shape out where the ears are a bit more. Wherever there's that darker 